Glover came to church. This week, for just a little while, I want to, to talk around this topic. Zechariah's visit to the church. Zechariah visits the church. Oftentimes we do, we make it to church, and that is a very honorable and, and, and noble uh, task in itself to achieve, is, is to arrive at church, to be at church. But there are times and there are seasons that I just want more from church. Amen, anybody. Again, there's a playoff game on. I want more from church. I don't want to show up so that I get a best attendee award. I don't want to show up so that you can say that you've seen me, but I want to show up and I desire to show up so that I can see the presence, experience the presence, and be in the presence. God. Amen? And so th this is our desire. So th there are three things that I believe we can learn from Zechariah's visit to the church. If I can have that scripture pulled up for me, please. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Beginning at verse 5, and these words were left on record. In the time of Herod, the king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Verse 6. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. Verse 7. Turn me down just a little bit, I think. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Verse 8. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot. And according to the custom of the priesthood, he was to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came and all the assembled worshipers were praying outside, then it was that an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. Verse 12. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. Verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear your son, and you are to call him John. For our hearing and our reading this morning, that was Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 13. Join me in prayer. Father, we just thank you, and I thank you for my co-laborer, my co-heir, my pastor, Pastor Trey, and calling upon you, O oh God, Lord, to release me from the duty of doing anything right and inviting you into the duty of sharing your heart and your word to us. Father, I just confirm that with one great big amen in the presence of sons and daughters, that you might use this space that you might speak to our hearts, that if nothing else, oh God, that we may be able to shepherd and co-shepherd every son and daughter into your heart and into your word. Father, we love you and thank you for the opportunity. We are humbled, oh God, and honored to be called mouthpieces for you. You speak, we'll listen. We love you this morning. We thank you and we praise you. And it's in your name, Jesus, we all together said, amen. Three things. I pray that we might gather from Zechariah's visit to the church. Zechariah's visit to the church. How many of you today, January 19th, are using something that you got for Christmas? How many of you are, are using, you don't have to be using it right now, but you actually are in your home life, in your daily living, raise your hands high, I just want to take a peek, that you're using something that you received as a gift for Christmas. Pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So, so if you're using it, if you're presently using it, then I believe that you probably believe that it's the right gift. Amen? If you're able to, to use it, if it's able to bless you on a daily basis, you probably are hearing in your heart that it was the right gift. Amen? I, I believe that the first thing we can learn and, and gather from, from Zachariah's visit to the church is how to recognize the right gift. 
I, I think Sister Lucy is, 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 is teaching um, children's church today, but, but her husband is here, so I'm going to talk about her a little bit if that's all right. I, 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 yeah, but my wife came home so, so, and told me this crazy story. Do you know that opening someone else's gift can actually get you in some trouble? But my wife came home and she told me about this thing called the Christmas tea. And, and I see why no men were out there. Yeah, this is for Sister Lucy, right? She'll know what I'm talking about. Some of you ladies know what I'm talking about. If you didn't make it to the Christmas tea this year, be on the lookout for the next fellowship opportunity. I heard it was an amazing time. But it's important to, to open the right gift. Or, or crazy stuff happens at the Christmas tea. Anyway, I want to pay attention to the text. I, I want us to see this because th there's something important for us to gather out of here about receiving the right gift. If you'll notice in the text, both Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were called into ministry. If you pay attention to the text, if you could pull that back up for me, Brother Steve. Um, if you pay attention to the text that, that right in the beginning, um, you'll see that Zechariah and his wife were both called in ministry. I thought this was really, really interesting that, that both of these um, husband and wife couple were of the priestly order. They were both called to serve the Lord. L listen, listen. What I'm simply trying to say is this. Zechariah and Elizabeth were equally yoked. The one who he loved also loved God. The one who she loved also loved the Lord our <laughs> If you, if you pay attention, you'll notice that their love did not draw them away from the Lord, but instead it drew them closer. I'm just trying to, to help somebody with this idea of gifting. They served the Lord together, the text tells us. What does this have to do with me, Pastor? I'm so glad that you asked. That as we walk into these new friendships and new relationships in the year of 2020, if there are any singles or anybody in new relationships in the congregation and or online, if the person or the people that you think are God's gift end up drawing you away from the gift giver, then that ain't from him. Let me make this really clear because it's in the text. Oh, Sister Katie, they're, they're smiling now. Yes, that's from the Father. <laughs> amen. The Millers, amen. Yes. If the gift that you've received during this season or this new year draws you away from the heart of the Father, that gift is not from him. It's in the text that they serve the Lord together, right? They, they, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing. It's in the text. This is something that we can learn from Zechariah's visit to the church is that the one that he loved didn't draw him away from God. The one that she loved didn't draw her away from God. But instead, they were drawn together. Amen, somebody. I, I, we come to church, but I want more from church. Speak to me while I'm here, Father. Help me order my relationships in your word so that I'm not confused. Help me to discern what is from you and what is not. Amen, anybody. I, I, it, it, just a couple things that we, we might be able to learn from, from Zechariah's visit to the church. I, I'm out of the way. Zechariah and Elizabeth first served the Lord together. They had God in common. <laughs> they had God in common. I thought that was fantastic. Maybe that's just for me. Maybe that's, I, come on, maybe that's, maybe that's just for us. Maybe that's just for us. Maybe that's just for us. I, 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 my wife loves Jesus. She really loves Jesus. And it really helps her love me even better. I believe that, that I'll leave the relationship stuff for someone more seasoned than I. Second thing, I don't plan on being before you long, just praying that we get more from church. We show up to church, but I want more from church. Second thing that I think we can learn from Zechariah's visit to the church is that prayer has power from outside the situation. Watch this. It's in the text. I believe that, 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 that we might be able to learn this from Zechariah's visit to the church that he, he experienced that prayer actually has power from outside the situation. Do, do you know that prayer from outside the situation still works? I, I, I was given this, 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 this just simple memo early on in ministry. And man, I've been carrying it. It's, it's not original. It's not mine. It was given to me, and so freely I give it. 
old preacher told me this. He said, listen, young fella, prayer can go places you can't go. Prayer is in, it can go places that you can't go. There are situations and in, in relationships and circumstances that I will never be invited to, but prayer can invade that thing. It, 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 come on. Yes. Good morning, everybody. The playoffs are on. I'm going to make sure you make it to the game. Just come on and, and get something from church. That prayer can go places that we can't go. They might not answer the phone. They might not ask your opinion, but man, you could put some prayer on it. They might not want to hear you. They might actually ignore you, but you can still put prayer on it. Prayer from outside the situation works. Look, look, I'm going to show you. It's in the text. It says Luke 1 and 10 in, in the 10th verse. It says, and when the time for the burning of the incense came, all of the assembled worshipers were praying where? Outside. <laughs> they were praying where? <laughs> so Zechariah's inside doing the work of the priest. But the worshipers are outside doing the praying. And if you pay attention to the text, somebody thinks I'm, making, I'm not making this up. This is not the only time that this happened in, in Scripture, that, that prayer from outside the situation worked. Acts 12 and 5 says this. It says, so Peter was kept in prison. Somebody knows the story. But, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So, somebody knows this story, that Peter was in church, and, and, and the people were outside of the church, but they were praying. I'm sorry, Peter was in prison. But the church was outside of the prison praying for Peter while he was in prison. It's in the text. It, it, look, look, look it up. Acts 12 and 5. Peter's in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And so not just in this situation, but also in Zechariah's situation, I stopped by to tell you this morning that in both cases, things started to change. Look, 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 listen, uh, somebody, please, don't, we pray, don't show up to hear me. Don't show up to see me. Get something from church. Get some relationship order from church. Get some encouragement to pray from the church. Look, at the text says, the text says, if you go back up to, to verse 11, bring back up verse 11. I want to make sure you guys don't think, I'm, I don't know, I'm not intelligent enough to make ever anything up, right? It says, and so when the time for the burning of incense came and all the assembled worshipers were outside praying, look at what happened. Next verse. It wasn't until then. After the praying, after the people were outside praying, then the next verse, not the same verse, not an A clause, not a B clause, an entirely different verse. How many of you know that in studying scripture, there's oftentimes a lot of stuff that happens between verse one and verse two? And the Holy Spirit allows us to fill in the space. Then the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. I thought this was amazing. That it wasn't until after the church prayed that Peter was set free. It wasn't until after the worshipers prayed that Zechariah's prayers were answered. Is somebody not paying attention? Acts 12, 11, and 16 says, Peter was set free from prison based on the prayer of those who were already free from prison. Somebody's got to catch this. Really plain. Listen to this. Peter was set free from prison based on the prayer of those who were already free from prison. In very simple terms, we see here that somebody is literally being set free from bondage, literally being set free from shackles, honestly being broken free from chains because of the prayer of the people that are already free. <laughs> prayer from outside the situation still works. It was free people praying for imprisoned people. I set them free. I listen, 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 listen. This is super important. If we want to learn and gain anything from Zachariah's visit to the church, let us gain something from his visit to the church. He learned that in his visit to the church, that prayer from outside of the situation still works. Some of you were born holy and you prayed your way in here, but I'm telling you, I'm the victim of a praying parent. I'm the victim of a praying wife. 
I, I wasn't born pastoring, wasn't even close to it. I'm an honest and unapologetic victim of a praying group of people. I'm getting out of here. Last thing. And I found this last point kind of the most interesting point. The last thing that I found and gained from Zachariah's visit to the church is the response of the people of God when he actually answered their prayer. <laughs> yeah. This was the most interesting part of the whole text for me as the, as the Holy Spirit began to minister to me this very truth. That one, we've got to make sure that we are receiving the right gift, recognizing the right gift. Two, prayer from outside the situation still works. And three, that even today, January 19th, 2020, the people of God still don't expect the power of God to show up. It's in the text. Watch. January 18th, 2020. I found it so true that often the people of God still don't expect the power of God to show up. Look at the text. Can, can you go back and pull that up for me? I think it, let's go around verse 12. Look, then the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Again, this was after the people were outside praying. Tell somebody outside prayer works. So this is after the people were outside praying that the angel of the Lord appeared and stood at the right side of the altar of incense. So Zechariah is in here. Just give you some background. He is the priest. He's serving as the priest. He's the pastor. He's the preacher. He's the leader of the church. He's in the church doing the work of the church. And there's been some prayer for him because he had a need. He and his wife, they were old and she was not bearing children. Remember, it was in the text. And so here they are standing in the need of prayer, actually receiving prayer. And then watch what happens when the answer to prayer shows up. Now, when Zechariah saw the, 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 the answer to prayer show up, I got a need. I'm asking, Father, that you supply and fill this very need. And because of your goodness and because you never change and because you always keep your promises, you show up to fill the need and you frighten me. <laughs> Just this part. But this is sometimes what happens in the church. <laughs> so Zachariah is startled and he's afraid. When the angel of God appeared and answered his prayer. I wonder what he was expecting God to do. I wonder what you're expecting God to do. Here's the man of God. Serving as, as, as a leader. Praying to God. Asking God. But I don't think he was expecting God. Oftentimes we're praying for things, but we really don't believe he can do it. <laughs> He's here now. How often do we pray, but don't believe that he can do it? How often do we pray with no expectation? How often is this the mindset? He was the priest. He was the one that was supposed to pray for you. And now he has people praying for him. And it scares him when God does it. What will you do when God does it? What happens, Southside, when what you're praying for and what you're prepping for actually arrives? What happens? Extra change happens there. How do you react when the presence of God shows up? Again, this is not the first time this happened in Scripture. Go back to the book of Acts. They too were in disbelief. 
When God's power was manifest and when he actually answered their prayers, the scripture tells us that Peter came to the door and no one believed it was him except Rhoda. You're praying for him to be free. Boom, the cells open up and he's free and he knocks on the door and you don't even let him in. <laughs> Expectation, where is it? This was the church. So, so, so Zechariah was the priest praying for results and difference. Uh, and in Peter's case, it was the church praying for results and a change. I'm walking out of here. But I pray that we walk out of here a little bit different. I pray that we might walk out of here having been encouraged to, to believe him. Expect him to show up. I believe that Jesus is going to show up. I believe that he's already here. I believe that he's heard the hearts of sons and daughters crying in all of 2019. And I believe that he's showing up in 2020. And I believe that he's going to do some new things. I believe that this is not just a new year, but there's going to be a new filling of the Holy Ghost. I believe that there's going to be new levels of faith this year, new levels of expectation, new revelations, new levels in maturity, new levels in belief. I believe we're going to take back new territory, new victories. I believe we're going to go places we've never been, see things that we've never seen. We've been praying for better, believing for better, but what happens when better shows up? If nothing else you gain from this, please hold on to this. Don't be surprised when he does it. Don't be dismayed when he does it. Don't be alarmed when he does it. Instead, be ready for him to do it. I sat in a board meeting that gave me life. First to one ever. <laughs> they told me church is a pretty good place to start being honest. First one ever. And so I sat through this board meeting that gave me life and then I was reminded of, of, of an illustration as we talk about being ready for God to do what he says he's going to do. Be ready for God to do what you're praying for. I was reminded of this illustration. Scripture says that 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 based upon his goodness and, 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 and our obedience, that God will open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I believe that. It's absolutely true. And I believe it so much that I, 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 I shared with, with the board, I said, if this is the truth, which it is because he said it, it would be very wise of me and my prepping for the truth to not bring this little cup. Pay attention. If he's going to honestly keep his word, which he always does, he keeps his promises, we sang about it, and he says he's going to open up a window and pour out a blessing we don't have room enough to receive, why would you bring a cup instead of a swimming pool? If you really believe him, I'm dragging a swimming pool. I'll borrow yours. We'll split it. Because <laughs> I don't have a swimming pool, but I believe the word of God. So maybe I need to go get a swimming pool. Put that in the budget. <laughs> swimming pool. It, it, it's, it's funny, but listen, what do we do? How much do we really believe him? If that's exactly his word and that's his truth, why would we come knowing he's going to overflow what we bring? Why are you bringing a cup? A 12-ounce one. Are you getting ready? Or will you still be surprised and have blessings just flowing out of this little cup? You can only keep what's in the cup. He was startled. Thank you, bro. He, he was startled. He was startled. I may startle you after he shows up, but I don't want to be startled. I am showing up. I may run around this building. I may cry. I may weep. We may act completely insane. But it's not because I'm startled. It's because he's good. 
Here's our charge. How are you getting ready? He's doing it. He's doing it. I want more of them, church. I want more of them, church. I want more of them. I want instructions on relationships. I want it. I want it. I want to know what you say about it. I want to know how to recognize gifts. I want to know what you say, Father. I want to know. I need to know. I need to know your standard. I need to know how important praying is that it's not me checking off this checklist. It's not me checking off the box. (laughs) It's actual opportunity and an honor to have your ear, to hear your heart, to give you mine. I want more from church. I want to not be startled when you show up here, when testimonies burst forth. I want to not be afraid. When when your spirit shows up and you manifest yourself, oh God, I want to be ready. I want to be obedient to your call. I want the courage to prepare for what you're doing. To prepare for what I'm praying for. I want my expectation levels to rise. I want to learn to believe you more with confidence and conviction, unwavering. I want all disbelief to disappear. This is just my cry. This is just my cry. Just my cry. Connecting with um, defining church and and when we pray and being expectant and um, our response to that, the Lord brought to mind this thought and this feeling and this I don't know uh, perspective that can be on the church that we judge, we judge, and I think so often it's true. How often does the church pray for something, and then when it happens, not the way they wanted it to happen, they judge that it is not of God. I think of, we brought up before, Kanye. How many people prayed for Kanye to know the Lord, to love him, and then when it happened, so quickly to say, "Mm, that's not you, Lord, that he's got to be in it for the money. He's got to be in it for the fame. Why are we so quick sometimes? How often do we pray for people, for things to happen, but but the way it happens is not in our preference. The way it happens is is happening in a way we've never seen before. It makes us uncomfortable. It now makes us have to step out in a new area, and we don't like that. This must not be God. God. And God's saying, is this not what you prayed for? I'm moving. Are you judging how I move? Are you judging how I decide to work? So as a church, Lord, as we move into this new space with you, this new church plant, this combining of three churches to see something we've never seen before. May we not judge how you're going to do it. May we expect you to move in ways that make us step out in ways we've never done before. May we expect to be stretched, to be uncomfortable, to see things we've never seen before, God. And Lord, we know that there is wisdom in discernment, but discernment is not criticism. There is a difference. One is of you and is listening to your Holy Spirit, Lord. The other is of fear of man. So Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to guide us.
to expect you to do great and mighty things and to be discerning to know the difference, Lord, and to be quick to praise you and to praise your ways, not our old ways, <laughs> to praise the way you want to do it, Lord. Purify our hearts, purify our intentions, rid us of our opinions and our preferences. May it all be by your ways, your mighty ways and your works, and by your heart, align us with you so that we're quick to rejoice, quick to jump in and join you, Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. I was, uh, I was just reminded as my wife was, was praying and admonishing us in the spirit that when, when, when Mickey and I got married, you come into a relationship with real preferences that, you know, as free as you might think you are in Jesus, and maybe this has happened to somebody, it wasn't me. Like, I'm, I'm pretty awesome. That was what I thought when I got married. I'm like, I'm pretty awesome. Like, pretty humble. And then I realized, I hear you laughing, there's all these preferences that just start coming out of me, and it starts to bring division. It's very real. And the Lord just, just reminded me real simply right now, as, as many here and beyond this space have prayed have prayed in many different ways for the kingdom of God to manifest here in this city, in this region, in this time, in your lifetime, in ways that he says are good. Whatever those prayers have looked like, it could be for your own family, that, that's actually, a, that the kingdom of God, the heavenly kingdom would be made known right now on the earth in my family. That's a part of the prayers being answered right now within what God is doing in this community, these churches. It looks and sounds different, but I don't want anyone to miss out on your prayers actually being answered right now in the midst of the season we're in. Um, but that along the way, as we discover what God is saying is best, I believe one of the main things he's doing is centering our hearts and our minds, our faith, our boldness, our resolve on the power, on the life of Jesus Christ, period. To that end, may God, as preferences disconnected me from my wife at times, may God knead out our preferences. Dough, just knead it out. If you're willing, we're looking for his wisdom, but I'm just believing in a people who we're not going to be startled when God gives us a hundredfold what we think he's giving us right now. Who's not startled. When we came to the city as missionaries, we asked for the city. <laughs> That's what we asked for. We didn't, we didn't ask for a church. We didn't ask for a ministry house to disciple people. We drove through that sign that says, Welcome to Elmira, honoring our past and our future, I think, is in the present. And said, God, thank you for giving us a city. Not for my name, my desire is not for ours, but for Jesus, that Jesus would be the one wooing and loving people and families back into their rightful inheritance in God, him. So I'm reminded of that personally, as I, as I want to be, I want to be a faithful steward in the season of God's heart amongst us all. So I received that word, Pastor Jehara, thank you. My wife, Mickey, thank you. I just receive it. I receive it. And I'm saying from the front, God, may I look behind me in the middle of service and anticipate angels. May I walk the streets of my city and my neighborhoods and anticipate chains being broken as we walk. What I'm asking, I'm stirring up your own faith. I'm trying to stir up your own faith. May I go to the place I work, maybe for me it's in this building, but may I not continue to just think the business of the building is the redemption of life for eternity in Christ, but no, it's the business of the Spirit who lives in me so that people would be drawn. But that as we walk into our businesses, our marketplaces, that my, my, my faith, I wouldn't be startled when I recognize that God is shaping and shifting people's hearts within that context because love constantly shows up when I walk in the door because God lives here. We wouldn't be startled, not a people startled. 
Not for some who, again, we've become complacent and content with just enough to get by. God, if, if you don't know, is infinite in his whole nature, and so he's always asking and inviting you to take a step further and higher in him. So the season of increased faith and increased reward that he's offering us is going to require some people to take new measures of faithfulness. I'm just saying plainly, in order for that pool to grow, the cup to turn to a pool. It's just some of us in here. So I'm, I'm saying, God, me first. We're praying in secret. My wife, what's it going to cost us to be all in for what God's doing? And are we willing to pay the cost? We're in. We're in. We're in. So, Father, would you just stand with me? And I just want to speak blessing. Would you just pray with me? And if, if you're just in this own way, your own lives, as God is stirring up, Again, increase faith and capacity to believe him for you. what God has said is good in your life, for perspectives, for paradigms within our own lives, the way we view people, the way we view relationships, the way we view the circumstances we're facing, the way we function as a church and as a people of God, whatever it is in you, maybe this is like a, just a moment of just grace, grace, grace. Grace is the power of God to transform you into who he says you are and created you to be. That if you just extend your hands in a posture of receiving, if you just this morning are saying, God, God, I, I'm, I'm willing and wanting to be stretched to be a container fit for your glory. To be a container fit for all that you say is in store. And it's namely his very life revealed within you. We're asking for him. We're asking for him. Father, in Jesus' name, may we as a church, a church of seekers and saints, a church of sinners and saints, God, a church of people who are just discovering the beauty of a life with you. Today, God, I'm, I'm saying again, Father, would you make me someone and may I learn to choose God to prepare my life for all that you have for me. Right now, God, I, I say the blessings, the promises, the inheritance that are all in Christ, God, I want to partake in all of them with you. I want to experience all that you paid for, Jesus. And so, Father, as we as a church come into faith together, Lord, may we see, Father, that, <laughs> Father, that you are a God who doesn't necessarily want to startle us with your arrival, <laughs> but you actually want us to expect your arrival. May we be a people who expect you to show up everywhere, Father. Increase our faith and increase our capacity these days, Jesus. Together, together. Yes, Jesus, we don't want to miss you. We don't want to miss seeing you. When you came, when you came to earth, so many missed you. You did not come the way they expected you to come. And you did not conquer the way they expected you to conquer. You died on a cross. And they did not recognize you as king, as savior. And they had been waiting and waiting for years and years. And they missed you. We do not want to miss you. Lord, because you're coming in a new way, in a way that we've never seen before. Open our eyes. Open our eyes to see you now. However you come, however you move, we want to see you. We want to be with you. We want you, Jesus you Jesus so that others may see you and have you as well thank you Jesus everyone said <laughs>